What are we going to do, Livy? We're going to get a new golf cart, bruh. All right. Why are we doing that? Mommy crashed the last one. <laughs> yes, she did. <laughs> All right, so as you heard in the intro video uh, with my daughter talking, uh, this is uh, what we're replacing our old UTV with. You're seeing an after shot here. There's a lot of work that's going into this, so definitely watch the whole video. It's It's got some funny stuff and uh, some good information too. But uh, yeah, long story short, my wife crashed our UTV years ago uh, that we were using up at the cabin, and uh, it was just a little too high performance, I think, for her. And um, you know, she likes to have the dogs with her, and this thing goes about 15 miles an hour, so. <laughs> It'll hopefully calm her down a little bit. And um, yeah, so we're gonna get it in nice shape though. So hang tight and uh, yeah, watch the video. All right, so Downstater here, we uh, we finally got it back home. And um, the truth is it was a bit of a sketchy buy. Um, I don't usually buy stuff like this. I usually, you know, take a good look at things and, and negotiate and all that. But uh, this is from a golf course and it was from a guy who was basically the golf pro. He didn't know what the hell he had there. Uh, he was just told by the owners, hey, get rid of this equipment. And uh, so it was, it had to be a fast deal. Uh, people were playing golf there. And uh, and I knew what I was looking at. The price uh, they originally wanted was 3000 uh, After I went and looked at it, it was not running. It was in rougher shape than it should be for 500 hours. And um, yeah, I mean, typical kind of wear and tear on a, on a golf cart though, I, I, I would actually say. Uh, so not the end of the world, but uh, it, it needed some love. You know, that, that's, that's for sure. So um, yeah, let's get down to what it actually needs. All right, so I've went ahead and tore it kind of down in my driveway and uh, took a good look at, at what's going on. Uh, there's a couple issues that need to be addressed and uh, yeah, it's not the end of the world. So one thing I already did, I thought it just had a bad battery. So I went ahead and threw the proper size and rating battery in there. Let me see if I can get you a good shot at it. There you go. So the original battery is just bouncing around in there. Uh, it was the wrong battery and there are little clips to hold down the battery inside down there. I'm uh, not sure if you can see that in the video, but uh, they were, they, it was the wrong size battery. So the clips weren't even able to hold it down. Now it's nice and secure. I have the right battery in here. That was a hassle to find. Easy Go does not make it easy to find the right battery. So I literally had to just measure the base, go to my local Napa and start measuring batteries in the back. My local Napa is pretty cool. They let me do that. So did that right off the bat. Uh, did the air filter again, easy to do quick, quick job, no big deal. Um, and that's that. So the, the machine still did not run. And so I looked around, I kind of made sure all the normal stuff was okay. And then I looked back here and went, huh, that's interesting right here. What's going on there, fella? So anyway, suffice to say, this is not uh, the the factory starter generator on this thing. It's it's um it's probably from another cart, another kind of similar cart. A lot of these a lot of these have the same Kawasaki engine. So if you're watching this and you don't have an Easy Go, maybe you have a club car. Well, a lot of these parts are actually interchangeable. So just keep that in mind. This is not factory on this machine. On this machine this tab should be over here and then there's an there's an adjuster back there that pushes tension on this so they, they threw this on from something else who knows who cares doesn't matter so i'm just going to make it work it needs to be about there there's a lot more so she also the let's just go through it real quick the ignition which is right there does not work for the lights the lights are, are the third switch there the third set, set of switch I don't even know if I'm saying that correctly, but you know what I mean. So the first the first notch over is on, the second notch over is lights on. The lights do not work, and I traced it back to that switch. Everything else is fine, the wiring's fine, it's the switch. So I found one of those for 16 bucks, I'm gonna swap that out. I already did this off camera, but maybe I'll, I'll, I'll grab it off and show it to you. It's pretty simple though. It's a 12 volt outlet. Um, you can buy them anywhere and I'll, I'll put a link in the description for all this stuff. But um, there, in a lot of these golf carts, there's already uh, the wiring for a 12 volt outlet behind there. So it was back there. I just had to run some extensions, make sure polarity is right, positive and negative, good to go. That's easy. So we'll show you some of that in a minute. The last thing that it really needs is brakes. It doesn't stop. 
Um, it, it's <laughs> it's pretty bad. So anyway, I got it all torn down. I'm going to show you a brake job on this thing. It's fairly simple, fairly easy, uh, and we'll go from there. All right, so this is the uh, the brakes on an easy go. Uh, it's a simple job. It's anybody can do this. You don't need to be a mechanic. It's pretty good. Uh, so. And a lot of these are similar. The easy goes, I, I think, are fairly simple, but I mean, the, the club cars are simple too. There's just not a lot to it. Just a couple things you want to keep in mind. So, yeah, we'll go from there. All right, so first things first, obviously take the wheel off, take your lug nuts off. I'm not going to, I'm not going to show that. If you don't know how to do that, definitely don't bother trying to do the brakes. Uh, okay. So there's a cotter pin. I already, I already removed it and then stopped and realized, you know what, I should video this. So the cotter pin goes through here. Uh, and then it's it's bent up, you know, simple cotter pin. Remove the cotter pin. Don't ever reuse these. Go buy some new ones at Tractor Supply, Hardware Store, whatever you want to do. Don't reuse these, please. All right. Next step is a one and an eighth socket, as you can see right here. Um, get the old Ugga Dugga gun, and there you go. So castle nut comes off. Easy to go. Easy going. Uh, you got a, a washer there, and then. This should slide right off. Now, I already did, um, I already actually put the brakes on this side. Shoot, I should have done the other side. But anyway, um, so this side I'm just re-disassembling to show you. The other side, the other side I actually had to use a puller. So the old the old brakes were so worn on there that uh, the, the shoe was actually stuck on them because of the groove inside of the shoe. So I actually had to take a puller and pull the old brake drum off, uh, which is, you know, not fun. So uh, what you have to do in here, again, is fairly simple. I'm just going to disassemble so you can see it, and then we'll reassemble uh, on the video. So just keep a track of, I would take a picture, actually, of all your springs. Come on, girl. And uh, just remember which one's on top, which one's on bottom. That's important. The rest of it's not that important. It's fairly simple. So uh, you just go ahead, and once you have the actual springs off, you have retainer clips right here. Um, and with these, I like these because they're really one-handed. You know, you can just do them with a pair of pliers. You just turn the little knob in there, pull this guy off, and keep it to the side. Good to go. Easy day. Uh, same with this one. Turn it against there. Boom. There's your clip. No big deal. Now, as you can see, the brake shoes are ready to just fall out. Um, so that's what they look like. Make sure they are different. That's the top and that the orientation does matter. So the top of them, you can see one's got a point, one doesn't. The bottom are almost identical. Again, just remember how this all goes together. When you take one of the old ones off, put the brakes, put the shoes in the orientation they go, put the, uh, the springs in the orientation they go, and then you're good. You don't have to worry about it. It's easy that way. So as you can see, all I did was grease the grease points. On this particular model, there's three grease points on each side. You want to make sure you put brake grease on those points. And then you're going to want to fully dial in the adjuster right here. There's a screw right here. You want to you want to put it all the way in and then you actually want to pull it one to two turns out, okay? And that's basically what you want to do with the adjuster. There's not a whole lot to this. Don't go nuts, don't kill yourself. It's just that is important though. So make sure you do that part. Uh, the rest of it is fairly simple. There's there's an adjuster inside. Well, there's a excuse me, there's an idler arm, I guess you would call it that goes inside the brake right here. And uh, again, you wanna clean it, get all the brake dust off, and then grease it up, okay? This is an automatic adjusting brake, so it, it really does a lot of the work for you. And so you don't wanna, uh, you know, really mess with too much in here. Just make sure you make it all loose and lubricated and working correctly. Slide that back in, put it up against, come on, there you go. So it, it goes right in that notch, good to go. Take your automatic adjuster, slide it right in there make sure it's against the little tab in there make sure it's one nice solid little piece like that you can kind of feel it all kind of go together in one way and then you're going to want to make sure that the adjuster is facing up the slot in there is facing up so you can put your brake pads back in again reassemble the same way you took it apart make sure that little pin goes in there make sure that side's in there take your your pin put it in There we go. So, shoes are back in, or one shoe, I should say. Make sure it's seated properly down there and seated up here. That is very important. Uh, if you're not doing that, you could have real problems. Also, make sure that the, the pads themselves are not getting any um, grease on the pads. You don't want grease on the actual pads themselves. That would give you a bad day and a lot less stopping power. 
So slide this one back in, make sure it's in that slot, make sure it's in this slot. And pop that on there, push them in, boom, there you go. No big deal. All right, so as you can see, the pads are where they need to be. Everything's looking pretty kosher. We also make sure you grease all these parts and grease those parts wherever the pads touch. Just make sure the grease isn't on the pads, obviously. So next step, grab your top spring. I like to do it under and over. That way you can really kind of get some real estate on it. There we go. So that's in, and then you just want to make sure you look all over this. Make sure that that adjuster's in there properly and nothing's wonky uh, before you put the next spring in because it will get a little tighter after you do that. So there you go, throw that next spring in the bottom. Same deal, this one's a lot easier to get in. All right, so that's good. Now, I had some, I had a broken uh, drum on the other side, so I'm gonna go ahead and just replace the drums. Again, I will, uh, I'll go ahead and put these in the description. If you guys wanna buy them and support the channel, that'd be great. Uh, I'll leave them in the description. So there's some nice newer drums here. Uh, again, this is for an easy go. And uh, I, I just feel more comfortable than leaving these old ones in. Again, the other one on the other side had a huge crack all down the side of it, which was kind of alarming to see. So again, here's the deal with this part. Make sure your brake's not on, by the way, obviously, although you wouldn't be able to get it on that far. So um, you gotta kind of finagle it. That side's low. You wanna kind of look at it in the brake drum and make sure it's all kind of even. And then it should slide on, not horribly. It's just, you know, there you go. There you go. So, and if there's any real bad restriction, don't hammer it on, you know, something's up. It should just kind of slide on, like I said. Yeah, you can kind of squeeze it on and then, and then it's, uh, a simple is just re re reassemble like you took it apart. You know, nothing crazy there. You put the washer on first, castle nut, and always do both sides too. I, I can't imagine a situation where you're only doing one side, but always do both sides and readjust the adjuster because then it'll automatically adjust back to the right tension. Don't only do one side. I, I just, that makes no sense. Always, when you're doing brakes on a golf cart, do both sides for sure. So uh, this takes 90 foot pounds of torque. Um, and then you can go up to 140 in order to get the hole lined up for your cotter pin. So, you know, a typical Ugga Dugga gun is gonna get you pretty close to that. And then I'll check it. And then I'll check it once we're on the ground. All right, so I'm pretty lined up. What I'm gonna do is throw the brakes on and then grab the um, the uh, torque wrench and just make sure we're around 90 to 140. We got the torque wrench and it's set to, hold on one second. What do we got? We are set to about 100 foot pounds. So let's see how she does. Yep, perfect. So that's. That's already hitting 100 foot pound without even moving, so maybe I'm a little over, but it can go up to 140, like I said, so I'm better to be over than under. Like I told you, new cotter pin always, 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 always. You talk to any mechanic, they'll say the same thing. I am not a mechanic. This is not, uh, you know, disclaimer. This is not a how-to. This is how I'm doing it, but I was always told by every mechanic I've ever deal dealt with, always a new cotter pin. All right, so uh, the other thing I did for both, all the way around, is new tires. You know, on these golf carts, the rear is what stops and goes, right? It's it's the drive axle and it's the brake axle. There's no front brake, so I want I wanted to get some good traction. These are the V-lug, you know, the the, the V-lugs from uh, Tractor Supply. I did 20s on the back, 20, 10 by 8. The front has the regular golf cart size, 18, 8.5, 8. Um, and it actually says in the manual, the service manual, it says to do that. So I'm pretty confident that that was a good way to go. Uh, but again, I want good braking and good traction. This is going to be up in the mountains, so. That's why I went that way. All right, so put your center cap back in there. Lift it up. Ugh. And there we go. All right, so. The other thing I'll say too is don't always trust an Ugga Dugga gun as, as the end all be all. 
always go around with a straight bar, you know, half inch and just crank them all. Make sure you got a good amount of, of tightness on there just because, you know, you can't always judge with the Ugga Duggas, right? Like, let's just be honest. All right, so as you can see here, uh, I had to make this bracket with uh, just a piece of, of fence mending material and I cut a slot right into it, ground it down, filed it the whole nine yards, attached it back here. And that's how I'm going to adjust tension on the starter generator. The starter generator on this, is, like I said in the beginning, it's not the factory one, but it's fine, it runs, it's okay. Um, it looks like it got a little crispy here at one point, that's not good. Anyway, um, this thing's got 500 hours, so I'm really not gonna put, I'm not gonna replace parts until it's needed, you know? It doesn't have a lot of time on it. Let's just get this done. So, uh, what we will do is grab a big screwdriver and give something to get some leverage on there. Most of you guys don't have a cart that's this butchered. Oh, my arms are shaking. I'm doing this in such a weird way. Hey! All right, Whew. all right. That's pretty good tension. I can feel it. Oh yeah, nice, perfect. All right, so we got good tension on there. This thing should do fine. I'm gonna give it one more good crank. I like that, okay. Okay, next step. The other thing is this should have one long bolt, I believe going uh, through from this side. Am I right about that? No, through from that side. All the way through, it doesn't, so whatever. Uh, they put in two smaller bolts and I'm not going to cry about it. Let's just get down there and tighten it up. All right. There we go, all right. So you just tighten up the uh, the mounting bolts, and then this thing should start no problemo. All right, so we got new battery. It's freshly charged. I'm gonna put it in neutral. All right, that's neutral. I think we should be good. Let's see if this thing runs. I'm kind of excited, actually. Now, the wiring was wonky, so I ended up uh, basically coming in here and tying up a bunch of it. There was there was wires just kind of hanging out. These are actually for the turn signals that this thing never had. Um, there's some other stuff I didn't like, but uh, anyway, so, and I, I already did this and I had a video and it got screwed up, so I'll just show you what I did. I ended up taking, this has halogen lights originally and they're, they're kind of garbage. They use a lot of amperage, they're not even that bright. Um, I just, I don't see a point these days when you can get nice, you know, flood LEDs like this for, uh, I think I paid 20 something dollars a piece, you know? And, uh, so anyway, I just took some heat shrink. Hopefully you can see that back there. Uh, I took some heat shrink around the bracket, some nice, really good gummy rubbery heat shrink and got it nice and hot and then used a stainless steel hose clamp around the bar and that gives you a really nice solid mounting i've done this on a couple boats and it's just it's a beautiful way to mount these things if you have a bar honestly get some good clamps so don't get the jinky uh, zinc uh, the junky zinc ones get stainless steel clamps they tend to be a little stronger and then use some rubber around the mounting strap and heat it up so it's hot and gooey and then start cranking it down and man you will just get a nice mount right there so i uh, ran the wires back and i just connected them let me see if i can get you uh right back here you can see the plug hopefully you can see that there's a plug right there that's the wire i literally just uh you know butt tie butt connected it to the original wires that went to this original halogen light. So it's just taking the positive and negative right off there. And instead of running these headlights, it's running the, the, the LED ones. Simple, again, anybody can do this. Just make sure polarity is correct. Use a multimeter or a test light and get your polarity right. Butt connect it, tape it, solder it, whatever you wanna do, get a good connection and protect it from water. Zip tie it up there and call it a day. All right guys, not a lot of work there. And it, it, I'll tell you, we tried them last night and holy crow, they are so bright. It's just awesome. All right, so just go ahead and uh, pop the, the bolts out of here. Yours may be different. Mine is pretty simple. There's just two bolts on the bottom. Well, screws really, and they're like, they're tech screws. I don't know why. Uh, and then this whole assembly should come out. Pop the gas 
one off. Why is that so tight? Come on, there you go. So the fuel gauge, it doesn't work right now. I'll diagnose that another day. I really don't care about it. Um, wires, you just keep, in, keep track of what's where. You know, when it's in the on position, uh, you have blue on the left, red on the right. Uh, again, your, your green and blue, light blue, are gonna be your ignition. Your blue with the white stripe on both sides, that's gonna be your, your, uh, your headlights, okay? So that's, it's in the wiring schematic, but I'm just letting you know that's how it works. These do matter where they go. So uh, don't, don't, you know, don't put them on the wrong side. That's what I'll tell you. Uh, and, you know, bend that one up so you know that one stays on top, okay? And then the green's on top and the light blue's on bottom. All right. All right, so we got the new switch. This one looks to be the same. And it's got a little slot in it, so you can only put it in one way, I think. Yeah, yeah, it can only go in one way, although it's a lot sloppier, this one. I don't like that. That sucks. It's, it's really sloppy in there compared to the uh, factory one. Ah, this is what you get with the Chinese stuff, man. That's a shame. That is annoying. Ah, all right, whatever. All right, so go ahead and take your retainer uh, ring on the front. You go ahead and screw that back on. Again, this isn't rocket science. I'm just trying to help you guys out if you need to do this. And get it on there fairly tight. Give it a quick... Oh, let's grab it from the back there. So it only goes on as far as it goes on. There's actually a stopper. And then what you do is make sure you're holding it tight and then you actually tighten it from the rear. There's a, there's a, there's a, a stop, there's a, an anti-back out collar right there and then a nut, a big nut right there. So you just grab your channel locks and give it a tightening from the backside actually, which is really a nice design. That's what you want to do. Looking good. All right, so go ahead and where were we here? So I think uh, blue was on bottom, All right? Reconnect that, reconnect green. This blue was on top, that blue was on top, All right? Uh, I think we're right about that. I think we are correct about that. All right, so let's give it a try. Let's just make sure we did that right. I think we did. Okay, we got ignition, good. And let's go check the lights. Ugh. Yeah, good deal. All right, cool. So, we're all set. That makes me pretty happy. So everything's off, pull that out, and let's get this button back up. Like I said, the gas gauge works, but it's intermittent, and I really don't care about it, so I'm just not that concerned about it. Um, you know, it's got a clear fuel tank in here. I don't really see a point in... Uh, in having a working fuel gauge. You just pop, you lift the seat up and you can see exactly how much fuel you have. Throw out all the old stuff. All right, cool. East Coast Kawasaki, they're no longer in business. It's my buddy's shop and uh, I miss I miss the old days. So I go always keep the, I always keep these keychains on all my stuff. But anyway, all right, so we're good. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and, and adjust the pressure on all these new tires and uh, we'll get back to you in a second. All right, that's about 22. All right, so I think this job's pretty much done. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, you know, it, this machine, like I said, we got it for about 2,000 uh, bucks. All said and done, we did lights, tires, front and rear, brakes on the rear, a new battery, uh, fixed the relay, made the, uh, you know, the tensioner that I showed you guys earlier uh, for the uh, starter generator. Uh, New ignition, I don't know if I said that, the 12 volt plug, greased everything, and uh, new drums, all that stuff too. So we put about, I would say, about 600 bucks into it. So let's call it $2,600. I'm pretty confident that this machine's worth around three to 4,000 minimum. I would say about 4,000 uh, I could easily get, especially if it was, you know, springtime, summertime, something like that. So, you know, overall, quite happy with it um i think it's a worthwhile uh machine worthwhile project and uh you know it's in good it's in good running condition now so um yeah i'm, I'm overall pretty happy with it so let's uh let's take it for a spin and see how it's doing let's get this tailgate down real quick or the bed i should say all right so go ahead and get that on and I might have to choke it a little bit. Let's just see. Oh, you know what might really help actually? If we put it in gear. 
That would probably help, right guys? Okay, all right, ready? Let's go!